And <laughs> there are any number of cutting edge interpretations of quantum mechanics. One of them is called the many worlds interpretation. Philosopher John Leslie says that this is an alternative to fine tuning arguments for the existence of God. I wonder if uh, Professor Craig or anyone else would like to comment on that. Actually, I think John Leslie sees many worlds hypotheses as being very friendly to the idea of fine tuning because those who have the resort to many worlds in order to explain these anthropic coincidences thereby show that there is something here that cries out for explanation and that the easy answer, oh, this is just due to chance, it's just the cosmic lottery, doesn't satisfy. So that in, in that sense, although the many worlds interpretation is an alternative to design, it does nevertheless recognize that there's something here that cries out for explanation. There's more than meets the eye. And so in that sense, it's, it's a kind of backhanded compliment to the design theorist. Uh, and and they find themselves in the same bed with each other. Now, one would want to go on to try to criticize, I think, these many worlds hypotheses as an illegitimate attempt to multiply your probabilistic resources uh, without warrant. It's like trying to explain some improbable event by saying, well, there were many rolls of the dice and there are many worlds. And I think one can criticize that on a number of grounds. I agree that the many worlds hypothesis has nothing to be said in its favor. However, I disagree with your initial remarks that even if it were true, it would not in any way undercut the argument that you gave from the fine tuning. I think it completely undercuts it because if you have the many worlds, then there will be among them some worlds that have the kind of fine tuning that will bring about our evolution. We just happen to live in one of those yeah. worlds. And it's like whoever wins the lottery, it's highly improbable that they would win. And yet we know someone's got to win it. And likewise with the many worlds. We know that there's going to be some world that will have the right fine tuning for the evolution of us. Yeah, I, I didn't mean to imply uh, that it wasn't an alternative to design. You're quite right, Richard, about that. But what I was suggesting is that even though it is an alternative to design, that both the design theorist and the many worlds theorist recognize that there's something here that cries out for explanation, and they offer metaphysically and different... And they give, but the many worlds theory gives that thing that cries out for explanation, why we're here, in terms of, well, according right. to probability theory, it, right. they, they some are world alternatives. is going to have it, and we just happen to be in such a world, and there's no reason to explain anything further. Right. So that, that, it puts yes. it re an end to the regress of why questions. Well, that's the way the yeah, cookie crumbles. I mean, that's the goal. You know, I think that the one of the difficulties with these theories is that uh, the there aren't any mechanisms to generate many worlds that would be random and varied, and those mechanisms that have been suggested often involve fine tuning themselves, so that. It's like a lump in the carpet that's depressed at one point only to pop up somewhere else. Um, but you're quite right, I think, in your basic thrust that it does represent an attempt to avoid design. So the push is for an explanation as opposed to a brute fact. And we have alternatives, but the yeah. claim both here is that many worlds is not a very satisfactory could, alternative. Could I ask you a question of Richard? Because I think that the point that you were making connects with what Al was saying in that it doesn't seem that it's so much science itself that is incompatible with religious faith. It's this scientistic metaphysic right. that seems to have accompanied old, maybe late 19th century science and then on into the 20th century. And it's really this sort of, um, it, it's more like a sort of sociology of science that maybe is inimical to religious belief rather than science itself. And, and I think, in a sense, Al was ag agreeing with that insofar as many scientists would want to say they have to presuppose methodological naturalism to do their work. And it's, it, it seems to me that there is a point to be made here on, on your side, that there is this sort of sociology of science that is unsympathetic to Christian faith. But I guess what I would want to 
call into question, is that whole methodological naturalism and, and, and say that this is an unjustified scientism, that, that we, it's based on philosophical assumptions Agreed. we need to drop. Agreed. Okay. We're, we're running out of time. Do you have a quick? Well, yeah, I'd like to uh, comment on something Richard said a moment ago about um, the many worlds hypothesis. I, I don't think I entirely agree with that, which sometimes happens with me and Richard. But, <laughs> but um, um, if you consider, say, our world, the likelihood that just by chance it would, be, it would sh display this fine tuning is much smaller than the likelihood that it would be so by design. That is, the uh, hypothesis, I mean, the proposition that it's fine tuned in this way is much more likely on theism than it is on the chance hypothesis. Well, let's add lots of other, uh, lots of other uh, worlds too. Let's say there are as many as you like. It's still true with respect to our world that the likelihood on its being uh, designed, the likelihood on its being designed of its being fine tuned is much greater than the likelihood of its coming to be this way by chance. So I'm not sure that um, adding in all the other worlds really makes any difference. What, what it does make is this difference. You know that somewhere in that whole host of universes, there will be, uh, there will be some that are fine-tuned. Maybe you do know that. But it doesn't change anything with respect to our world. Quickly. You know, it's interesting about the many worlds hypothesis. Many theists would be very upset if David Lewis were right and there were an infinite number of w concrete worlds just like ours. So every way that a world could be is a way some world actually is. And why? Maybe it's because we cease to be important. It's far worse than what Copernicus did in decentering man. Well, consider another way that science might create a liability for theism. It's discovered, or has good evidence, that there are countless solar systems like ours with planets similar to us. So probably there's life similar to us throughout the universe. Milne, the cosmologist, raised the problem. Does this mean that the coming of Christ and his crucifixion become a traveling tent show, playing one night stands? You know, from, it's sort of, sort of uh, interesting, Richard. That's an interesting issue. So it here's is. a way in which <clears throat> modern Cosmology might create a problem. It is an interesting issue, but it was already broached in the 17th century. And there were several divines in the 17th century uh, that thought about this very question. They asked, well, might it not be that there's all sorts of other intelligent life throughout the universe? And they thought, yes, that could very well be. It'd be quite likely that God wouldn't just create us. I mean, we're wonderful and all that, but he might very well want to create all, all sorts of hosts of, race, of races of intelligent creatures. And then they raise that various question. Well, then what about, uh, what about Christ's sacrifice? And of course, one possibility is that these other races didn't fall. And another possibility, <laughs> they don't require any divine atonement. Another possibility is that they, um, that they fell, but for them, there's some other kind of atonement. And still another one is that Christ's sacrifice would be perfectly good for them, too. Weren't all these philosophers, were these one of these philosophers to burn half the state? Sorry? Bruno? <laughs> what was that? Was one of the philosophers who suggested this theory or recounting? No, no, they were both eminent um, Anglican clergymen. And they, they wrote books burned? on it. No, this, they were. This is later than 1600. Oh, okay. No, they were. They weren't. And, uh, and they weren't that, even singed. And on that point, uh, <laughs> but what Professor <laughs> <laughs> Professor Plantinga does leave out, though, that there have been prominent scientists and theologians who have thought that the incarnation must be a one-time-only event, and therefore extraterrestrial life is impossible. One named uh, Maunder, for example, was prominent in the uh, debate over the canals on Mars. But we're out of time on that particular debate.